Our founders wanted to protect the press, the fourth estate, the functional fourth branch of government. They realized that freedom of the press was essential. They recognized that a nation could not be strong without a press able to operate outside of the realm of government oversight or government control. In fact, Thomas Jefferson once famously said that were it left to me to decide whether we should have a government without newspapers or newspapers without a government, I should not hesitate a moment to prefer the latter. But times have changed since our Constitution was written, and today what is supposed to be a free press is under attack from our government. Slowly but surely, our government is infringing upon the rights of the media and eating away at freedom of the press. Nowhere is there that more evident than with the ongoing AP leak scandal and with the new revelation, the Fox News reporter James Rosen was investigated by the Department of Justice for his coverage of the State Department and North Korea. In both of these cases, the federal government subpoenaed hundreds of emails and phone call records under the guise of national security. But what the federal government seems to have forgotten is that freedom of the press, if it is to work as the press, must be nearly absolute, that there should be no boundaries to the protection of that right. It's a sad commentary on our times when I find myself agreeing with Britt Hume over at Fox News. But last night he was right on point about the federal government's recent intrusion into the workings of the press. There are legitimate national security secrets that it is the government's job to, to protect. And when they leak out, the government has a, has a right and a duty to investigate. But what the government has traditionally done in the past is to investigate the leaker and not, if you will, the leaky. And that, uh, that provides the balance between the government's job to, to find out what happened and the press's right to pursue information. That's the way it's been done before. That's the way it seemed to have been going up until now. But Traditionally, when there were leaks to the press, the government has investigated, but it investigated the source of the leak. It has not gone directly after the journalist or the reporter who reported on the leak. Or if they did, they did it in a very public fashion, like Judith Miller refusing to testify and going to jail in the New York Times. But now it appears that our government is going after both the source of the leak and the members of the media reporting on it. And not only is that unprecedented, it's unconstitutional. And this should concern us all. I don't want to end up channeling Pastor Niemöller and saying something like, first they came for the AP and Fox News, this is James Rosen, but I wasn't part of the AP. And I didn't particularly like Fox News, so I didn't speak up. So I'm speaking up now. Freedom of the press needed to be protected in 1787, and it needs to be protected today.